You might recall in a previous lesson we used uh, technology to explore what some of these graphs look like. And we will use some more technology today to help you with that. However, it's equally important that you can understand what's going on just with a computer that's between your ears. Okay. So before we get to the computers and we explore, I want to show you the tool that we used to use just to explore what does this shape look like. Okay. I want us to consider this equation, y equals x cubed. We know what happens for this. We're very familiar with this shape. But what happens for this guy? So go ahead, if you haven't already, draw up this table for me. And what we're going to do is we're going to try out some values. What happens for different values of x? What does the graph look like if we join up the dots? So these are the values I'm going to try out. OK? We know where x equals 0 is, is right in the middle. I'm going a bit to the left, and I'm going a bit to the right, and I'm going to try and get a picture of what's going on. So, all I need to do is take each of these values of x and substitute it in. I'm going to start in the middle because that's just how I roll. 0 as the next value, if you put it in here, well, y is equal to 0 cubed. 0 cubed is? So far, so good. I'm going to go to the right because positive numbers are a bit easier to deal with. When x is 1, y is equal to 1 cubed, which is 1. And then it starts to get more interesting as we get bigger numbers. 2 cubed is? And 3 cubed is? OK. Now just pause for a moment before we go on. Do you remember when we did y equals x squared? We noticed that when you tried out values over here, you got exactly the same values over here. Do you remember that? And that's why this guy is symmetrical. Okay. But what happens here? When x is negative 1, y will be negative 1 cubed. What's that shorthand? Indices are just an abbreviation. What's it an abbreviation of? Negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 a third time. 3, which is negative 1. It's negative 1 because there are how many negative signs? 3. Two of them cancel and they leave one behind. Does that make sense? Negative 2 cubed is going to be negative 8. And then lastly, very good. OK. So now let's draw a graph of this. But the reason why I would asked you to do this table first before we draw the graph is now we've got a good sense of what the scales should be. Scales need to be consistent on their own, right? If I draw a number line like this, and I say that's 0 and that's 1, then if I have a spot over here, then that had better be 2. Same distance, right? But when you add a new axis on, your new axis can be completely different. For instance, I could say that that same distance, I could make that like 1,000, right? Or I could make it a whole different unit altogether. Do you remember earlier in this topic, we looked at, say, uh, I don't know, time and temperature, or like seconds and um, kilometers, right? They can have nothing to do with each other. So in the same way, my x and my y axes are going to be quite different. So draw me a set of axes now. And what we're going to do is if you make it square like this, the same width as it is high, then we're going to go all the way to negative 3 and 3 on the edges for the x values. So that's these guys, right? Let's put them on. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. OK? So you can count them up. I'm not going to label them because I don't want my diagram to be too busy and um, clouded with details. But that's 1, 2, 3. There's the origin right there. And then there's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Okay? Now we want the top and the bottom to be able to capture these numbers. What's a nice round number that's big enough to capture all of these? How about 30 and negative 30? Does that, that sounds reasonable, right? So conveniently, I'm going to go 10, 20, 30, like that. And negative 10, negative 20, negative 30. Okay? Now how do I read this? Every one of these columns is a new coordinate. Okay, So for instance, this one is 0, 0. There's an x, there's a y. 
This one will be, have a look, 1-1. One, one. This one will be 2-8, and then lastly, and you can complete it off the left over here. Okay. What I'd like you to do is write them all out and then plot them. Can you draw a picture? Show me what this thing looks like, and then join up the dots as best you can. Okay. So let me just say that again. You're writing out what the coordinates are, and then you are plotting them onto your graph. So for instance, here is 0, 0. There he is, I already have him. But 1, 1, just be careful, like this is 10, 20, 30, right? So the x coordinate for 1 is here, but the y coordinate for 1 doesn't take you up very far, right? Maybe you might need to use, use a ruler so you can be accurate. Mine will be somewhere like there. It won't be high at all. Does that make sense? I'm going to give you a minute or two to get a head start on me, plot your points on there, and uh, see what the shape looks like if you join it all up. Um, you are probably ahead of me, so I want you to see how I'm going to join up what I've got. Okay? I've literally just taken all of these and I've popped them as dots, coordinates, onto my graph. The first thing I notice is just like y equals x squared, there's no straight line you can draw that goes through all of those, right? If you get a ruler and you try and like align it around, it will never hit all of them, okay? So straight line won't do. Just like y equals x squared, it's curved, okay? But different to y equals x squared, it's not just like a mirror image on both sides. But there is some symmetry. I want you to have a look at this. I'm going to join these up now. By the way, you may not have done this. I'm going to draw an arrow because it's not like the graph stops at 3. It's going to keep on going to 4, 5, 6, a million, whatever. So that arrow just indicates, yeah, I keep going. Okay. On the left-hand side. Okay. This, and I'd love it if you could label with me, is y equals x cubed. Okay. <coughs> now, what's really lovely about y equals x cubed is it has a symmetry, it's just different to the y equals x squared symmetry. This one, it's like a, um, it's like a mirror, right? So it reflects across, reflects across. Can you raise your hand? Have you finished drawing this shape? Hands up, straight. Okay, the vast majority, hands down. What I want you to do is take your book, your whole book, and instead of like trying to reflect it like this, I just want you to rotate it 180 degrees so your book is upside down. And once you've done that, once you've rotated it, do you see it's the same graph? Did you notice that? It's the same graph. When you rotate it, it's the same graph. Okay, okay so you can put your book back the way it was. So here's what I'd like you to jot down to, to sort of summarize that. Y equals x squared, maybe go back to a page where you have a parabola, right? It's not just symmetrical. It has a specific kind of symmetry. We call it... Reflectional symmetry. Why? Because x cubed has symmetry as well, it's just a different kind. This is not reflectional, it's... What did we do? We rotated, right? So we call this rotational symmetry. Okay. Now I promised we were going to use a bit of technology to explore this a little bit better. If you've so, got your laptop there, go ahead and open up to Desmos. And you should be able to get something that looks a bit like this. Okay. <coughs> You'll notice I've got a very similar scale happening here. All right. Can you compare? Have I got this right? Hold on. Yeah, that's good. Can you compare the green graph to the blue graph? Green graph to blue graph. X cubed versus X squared. Okay. This is the shape. You can draw it, you can get these two things on the left-hand side. The last thing you need is for this exercise, because I've written up the questions already, is see that x cubed? I want you to add some letters onto there just like we did with the parabola. I'd love you to add an A and a C, like this, just like we did to the parabola, and I want you to watch what happens? Go ahead, add your sliders just like you have before. And you'll notice as you slide now, watch what is similar and what is different. Okay? Let's start with A. Can we move this around? What happens when you make A bigger? Have a look. There we go. Oh, there we go. See that? 
Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, what's going on there? Dancing. Yeah, it's dan it's dancing. It's getting narrower, right? Do you see that? You see how it's squeezing in, right? And then when I go negative, what happens? Watch that. It goes woo. That's kind of cool. Okay. What happened to the parabola when we put a negative number out the front like this? What happened? It goes upside down, right? Well, look at this. Look carefully. Look. Isn't this an upside down version of this? It is, right? It's the same, what we call transformation. You've transformed it in the same way. What do you predict will happen when I change C? Well, just like with the parabola, when you, sorry, I'm just, I got bad aim on my thumbs. When you change C, then look, it just slides up and down. Okay? Just like it did for the parabola. Okay?